Let's build a little tiny something with React. And I'll do it in CodePen. So we know we need React to be available here. And CodePen makes it fairly easy to include libraries. Let's look at settings here. Well, first, I'm going to do this. Change view, uh, not that. I probably need to save it first. Let's call this Reactrobats S1 afternoon. Okay, save. Now that it's saved, if I go to settings, there we go, let's change view. Change view, professor mode. That's right. I am very professorial. So I'm going to copy this link into Slack, and then you can actually follow along as I type which is sometimes a bit easier. And the nice thing is, oh, my computer seems to be offline. My internet connection isn't working. That, that can't be. I'm using CodePen and it's working fine. Slack, you turd. Let me relaunch Slack. Pardon my harsh language. Maybe Slack's down. Well, if it ever comes back up, I'll paste it in there, and then you'll be able to follow along as I type. And you can actually copy and paste out of there, and you can scroll as you need to, because this is not a big, very big area in which to type. So we said in our, uh, I could go to settings here and add some external libraries. So for example, on the CSS tab here, I could include foundation. Go down here to where it says add external styles and pins. Go to quick add. I can just add foundation. Now it's in there, piece of cake. Go to JavaScript, quick add, let's quick add React. And we need React DOM as well. Because React can actually be used to make native apps too, like for iOS and Android with React Native. And either way, you use the same React library, but you don't use React DOM with native, you use React Native. So React DOM when we need to work with web pages. So we need React and React DOM here. Now, there's one other thing we need. As I said earlier, browsers don't actually understand JSX. You have to translate it back down to real JavaScript first. For that, you use a JavaScript preprocessor called Babel. Babel can do a lot of other stuff too. It can take bleeding edge JavaScript features, uh, let you write with those, and then translate it back into old school JavaScript. So if there's something that's absolutely brand new uh, being considered by the ECMAScript folks, um, then Babel will probably support it, and it'll just translate it into something that actually works. But you can even use this to write ES6 and have it translated down to ES5 for browsers that don't understand ES6, if that's something you need to do. But if you're going to use JSX, you definitely need it, because JSX doesn't work in any browsers. So I added. React DOM and React. I added Babel. Now I can go about my business. Now I said I need something in my HTML, right? I need at least one empty element. I'm just going to put main and replace it. So I'll just hide that. And then I need some JavaScript. So I need a component. And components in the slides I showed you were all classes. So let's make a class. I'll call it app. Now here we're actually going to use inheritance. We're going to inherit from React component. JavaScript, the keyword there is extends. Class app extends react.component. We have React, the React object, available because of what we did in our settings up here. So that's there, available basically as a global variable. React.component, so there's apparently a key on this React object that is the class component. And our class is going to inherit from that. What we need at a minimum inside a component is a render function. And the render function must return some JSX. So let's just return and h1. Now 
Again, that's just as though we had said react.createElement h1 null hello react. Same thing, that's what we're really doing here, but that's disgusting. We're going to do it this way. Much easier. Now we have a React component, but it's not on the page yet. So the last thing we have to do is use React DOM to replace, to stick our component in place of that other element on the page. So that is React DOM dot render, pass it our component as JSX. So app is the name of our component. We use a self-closing tag. And then we tell it document.querySelector main. Boom. We've got our H1 on the page. So that is pretty much as simple as a React app could possibly be. Questions so far? You'll get used to all this stuff in time.